Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month we're going to talk all about downloads so you can watch things offline from your Plex library. They just released an update to how offline viewing works. Sync is what it used to be called. Now it's going to be called downloads, and we're going to take a closer look at how the feature works now, and we'll do that in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how this new feature works. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, the new download feature works on Android and iOS, including the iPad that I have here. It also works on the desktop clients for Mac and Windows, and a lot of what you're going to see demoed on the iPad here is the same across all of those platforms. Now, in order to use this, you do need to be a Plex Pass member. If you are a member, but a server that you're connecting to is not tied to a Plex Pass membership account, you can still download content from that server, provided the server owner allows for it. And the download process is actually really simple. What you do is you go into a piece of content that you want to download and just tap on the download button and it will transfer the file to your device. By default, this will not do any transcoding if your device can play back the media. And that might be really useful if you're on the way out the door and you just want to download a bunch of stuff real quick. You don't have to wait for a transcode. However, in the case of this movie here, which is a full Blu-ray rip, I would have to wait quite a while to download it because it's about a 30 gigabyte file. Now it is possible to transcode downloads like you could before on the sync feature, but that is off by default. I will show you how to turn it on and manage it in a few minutes as we get into the settings portion of the video. Now you saw on the movie, when we click download, it just downloaded the movie to our device. TV shows work in a similar way here. So for example, I'm looking at this 90s TV show called Dark Skies that I wanted to check out. And I've got a trip coming up and I want to start downloading some episodes. So I'm going to dive into episode five here and just click on download. And now that will transfer the original file from my Plex server to my iPad here so I can watch offline. But let's say you wanted to subscribe to the season so that every time you get a new episode, it'll download automatically. What you can do is go up a level to the show's season, and I've got season one here selected. And now if I click the download button, you'll see that we have some options presented to us. So I can have it download just the season that I'm on, or I can have it download all the episodes. Additionally, I can have it download a certain number of episodes or base its downloads on what I have watched so far. So for example, I can have it just get one episode, the latest one, I can have it do the last five if I wanted to. I can also set it to just download the last five unplayed episodes. And then you can set it to delete things off your local device on a specific schedule. So for example, I could say, you know what, delete everything I watched on the next refresh. And so if I have this set to the next five, and then I have it set to delete on the next refresh, it'll delete anything I watched and download uh, new episodes that I haven't watched up to five. And I think this is a lot simpler than how it worked before with syncing, and you still get some of that synchronization here with your TV episodes. Now you can also download music for offline listening, and all you have to do here is go into an album that you want and click on the download button, and that will transfer all of the music tracks in their original format to your device. You can also do it on a track basis, so if I tap and hold on track four here, I can download that track individually if I want. So you do have the option here to grab individual tracks or complete albums. Now you can also download a playlist of music, but it doesn't look like collections work at the moment. So if I go over to this playlist that I set up that oddly has Guns N' Roses and Alanis Morissette in one thing, I can click download here and grab all of these tracks and add them to my downloads folder. So now that we've got a bunch of media downloaded, let's take a look and see how you can manage it and watch it. All right, so to get to our downloaded media, what we're gonna do is click on the hamburger icon here, and you'll see it right here on the bottom of my pinned media. Now, if you don't happen to see it, you can get to it through the more section here and then pin it permanently so it's always accessible. So I'm gonna tap on that right now, and it's in the process of downloading some music, and it's taken too long and I changed my mind, so if I wanna stop a download, I can just 
left swipe here and click on cancel and that will cancel the download and delete everything that it already has downloaded. Likewise, if I have something that's been previously downloaded, maybe I watched this episode, I can just left swipe and click on delete there and get rid of it. And then of course the play media, I can just tap on it to watch it. I can also look at it on a library basis. So if, if I've got a lot of stuff downloaded and I uh, don't really know what I'm looking for, I can go over here to libraries and look at it by the media type, whether it be TV shows, music, or movies. So pretty easy to manage here, very easy to get to. And once you delete it, it's gone. And that was one of the things that always bugged me about syncing is that things would just reappear sometimes. It wasn't easy to manage. Uh, now I can just delete it and I know it will be gone until I download it again. Now there are some ways to configure the feature, so let's take a look at how to do that real quick. We're going to go back up to our hamburger menu and this time click on the settings icon. And what we're going to do, let me zoom in here for you, is tap on downloads. And now you'll see some of the options that we have available to us. So right now I've got everything on the default, but what we can do is change some of this. So for example, if I want to change the video quality and maybe have it transcode by default, so I'm not downloading huge Blu-ray rips, I could go in here and maybe set it to 1080p, 8 megabits per second for my iPad. And then that way it'll transcode and give me a smaller version of the file. Likewise, if I have a lot of lossless audio, I can have it compress that for the road. So that's an option that you have available. Now on the iPad and iPhone, there is a compatibility option that you can see here. Uh, mine is currently set to maximize compatibility. And what that means is that if the file cannot be played on AirPlay or in picture-in-picture -picture mode, then it will transcode it to make it compatible. You can turn that off and just have it download the original file by clicking on original. And if the iPad can play it, it won't transcode. Now note though, because we adjusted the video quality here to 1080p at eight megabits per second, it will transcode in the current setting. But if I have this on original and have everything else on original here, it will just download the file outright. Now I also have a storage limiter here. So if I am concerned about filling up my iPad, I can reduce this a little bit and ensure that only a certain amount of storage is allocated for downloads. And if we go beyond that, uh, the download will not happen. Now on a mobile phone, you do have an additional option to determine whether or not data will transfer over your cellular connection. That is off by default, but you can turn that on by clicking on Use Mobile Data. And then on Android devices that have SD cards, you do have the option to have your storage set someplace other than the internal storage if you want. This phone doesn't have that option, so I don't see it, but other Android phones that have that SD card will allow you to select that and download media there. Now the settings you just saw are local to the device. So for example, if I have my iPad set to download original files, when I set my phone up to download only transcoded files, it won't impact the iPad setting. Each device will have its own preferences. Unfortunately though, you cannot set transcoding preferences for each piece of media. So in the case of my Blu-ray movie a little bit earlier, I'd have to go into the settings first to change things to transcode, download the media, and then change it back to original if I wanted to grab a bunch of TV shows in their original format. The good news is, is that the settings changes are not retroactive. So if you have a bunch of original media on your device and then change the setting, it's only going to impact what you download after you change the setting. The original files will stay in place. But if you delete them and then re-download, it will honor the settings that you just put into place. Now, a couple little odds and ends before we wrap up here. It looks as though you have to have Plex running in the foreground while the download is taking place. You can't put the device to sleep or go into another app, so just be aware of that. Second thing is that it's not currently compatible with Chromecasting. So if you want to cast something, you're going to have to do that from media playing on your server. Subtitles work depending on the device. If you have subtitles set to burn in, it's going to burn them in and transcode before downloading. But if your device supports subtitles, it will uh, dynamically add them to the content. Now this feature is brand new as of today, the day I'm shooting this video. I am sure things will change as time goes on. If you would like to impact how this product changes over time, definitely head over to the Plex forums and let the team know what you think about this feature or any of the other features. 
because user feedback is often integrated into the product. They're always in there uh, trying to figure out what people are looking for. So let them know what you think over there and let me know what you think on my comment stream down below as well. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching and I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.